All right, man. Shalom. We want to start off today by giving all praises unto the Heavenly Father and to His only begotten Son, Yahweh. Ba Hashem Yahushua. Okay, Yahweh. That's the name of who today many call God. They say Lord, Jehovah. Uh, Yesh, uh, um, what's another name? They say uh, Yahweh. But we know that His true name in the ancient Hebrew tongue is Yahweh. Ba Hashem. It's how you say it. In the name of Yahweh, that's the true name of who today many call Christ, okay, Jesus, um, Yeshua. But we do know that his name in the ancient Hebrew tongue is really Yahweh. So that's the names of the Heavenly Father and also the Son of Man. Okay, in the Paleo Hebrew, which is the uh, ancient Hebrew, the Lashuan Kodash, known as the Holy Tongue. And we do say much respect, okay, Shalom, unto you 12 tribes. Who consist of you so-called Negroes, so-called Latinos, so-called Native American Indians, and so-called Hispanics. You make up the 12 tribes of Israel in these last days. And much respect, okay, double honors unto the apostles of Great Millstone, who have been teaching this word, okay, uh, so that we, okay, can come out here to get that same understanding to put it out for the elect in the last days, you know. So, Lord willing, man, this video we make, it's edifying. And we want to touch on hell, you know. We want to Dude. touch on uh, the true understanding of hell, right? Because you hear about hell in the Bible, but we want to give uh, the the real context on it. Because a lot of times we might be talking about a parable. We want to talk upon the spiritual understanding, and then pretty much cut up the doctrine where you go down and burn forever and ever, because that is not supported by the Bible. The Bible does not support a place, an underground dungeon, where you pretty much go down, you're down there with the fallen angels, you're down there with Satan, and, right. you know, you live one life, one life you didn't know God, or or you messed up, and now you pretty much going through everlasting torture. And that's not what the Bible supports. According to the scriptures, man, you got three definitions of hell. You got Sheol, you got Hades, and you have Gehenna, you know? You read about Sheol, okay, um, within the Old Testament, which you just look into the definition, it literally just means death, man. It means the grave, okay? And nowhere in the definition of Sheol do you read about an uh, underground dungeon. And then you have Hades, which is the same definition, but you find it within the New Testament. And you have Gehenna. And Gehenna is pretty much just another um, term you see within the Old Testament, Sometimes in the New Testament, but that that right there, if you just look into it, that is just talking about an actual valley where kings of Judah, within the land of Judah, they would sacrifice their firstborn children to like Molech, or they would sacrifice it to some other god, right? So it was called like the Valley of Hinnom, and that's where you get Gehenna. Right. So these three these three definitions, which in English translates to hell, in the Hebrew or in the Greek. It does not go back to a place where you burn. You see, we want to get this right quick in the book of Ecclesiastes. Because we all go to one place. Every single spirit goes to like one place, man. It don't matter if you were wicked or if you were righteous. We're all gonna we're all gonna pretty much be going to the spiritual realm. Okay, that's what the scriptures say. Right. So after death, man, um, you don't go to you don't you don't pretty much go to heaven or hell, you go to the spiritual realm, which we're going to show you. <clears throat> Ecclesiastes 12 and 7, it says, Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto the Most High who gave it. Okay? So King Solomon says that, hey, when you die, your, your body goes back to the dust. Okay? Because you're going to find out your body, man, if you understand, um, you know, how we are made. I believe that the word is called like anatomy. Uh, if I'm, I gotta look yeah. that word up. It, it, you know, pretty much just your physical, your physical body, man. It's made up of different elements that you find within the earth. You know, like copper, zinc, magnesium, iodine. That's why you need all of these things, okay, to stay healthy, right? You need to maintain your body as you would maintain the earth, because your body is made up from the, of them same minerals. So, your body goes straight back to the ground, or your flesh. Go straight back to the ground when you die, and your spirit goes to the heavenly Father. It goes to the spiritual realm, all right, and that's where you be at rest. You see, um, 
I got one precept to back that up too. Okay, come. It's a Wisdom of Solomon 15 and 8. It says, And employing his labors lewdly, he maketh the vain god of the same clay. Even he which is which a little before was made of the earth, mm -hmm. uh, himself, and within a little while after returning to the same, out of that which out of the which he was taken, when his life which was lent him shall be demanded. So what the most high is saying in the scriptures, um, we we used to serve gods that we made out of clay. You know, and the most high said that that was vain. Mm -hmm. And let me read that one more time. He said and employing his labors lewdly, meaning wickedly, he maketh the vain god of the same clay, even he which a little was before made of the earth himself. Okay. So we're making gods, right? In this context, we're making gods out of clay that we are ourselves. You know, the brother was going into how we, you know, take on different elements, so we gotta give our body th those same elements. Um, and within a little while after, returns to the same. So when you die, your flesh is gonna go back to the, um, you know, as clay, it's gonna go back to the earth, into the dirt, and your spirit, the Lord's gonna demand it, and you're gonna go up into the spiritual realm. That's right, that's right, man. Because we're really a spirit. Uh, we're a spirit in this flesh. The only reason we're, that we're in these mortal bodies, all right, is because when we come down from the spiritual realm, you're gonna enter into a body, and we need a terrestrial form to uh to maneuver within this third dimensional uh you know world you see so you're gonna find out that you're not even a you're not even the flesh man your flesh is nothing but um your flesh is pretty much nothing but a um like a a cloak you're wearing or it's kind of like um it's something that you're using to get around in this life because you're really a spirit from the spiritual realm mm -hmm. so the spirit's incorruptible but your flesh it's going to go back to being corruptible like it was. Uh, but let me just get back to this point in Ecclesiastes 9 and 2. All things come alike to all. There is one event to the righteous and to the wicked, to the good and to the clean, to the unclean and to him that sacrificeth and to him that sacrificeth not. As is good, so is the sinner. As he that sweareth and he that feareth an oath. So Solomon... Um, he came to the conclusion um, that all flesh, man, all people come to the same event, which is what death, you know, we're ultimately all going to die. And also each and every person, everyone's spirit goes to the same exact place, the spiritual realm. You see, no, it don't matter if you was wicked or if you were righteous, you're going to go back to this spiritual realm and that's where you're going to be at rest. That's what the scriptures say. All right, so it don't, if you say that you're wicked and you're going down to burn, well, that's really contradicting, um, you know, really these three scriptures that we already brought out, you know? Literally, we can, you can use these scriptures right here to cut up that doctrine. We don't even need to really go into, um, you know, pretty much the, the, the definitions and stuff. We could just bring out what the scriptures say and what the scriptures support. And that's what something these Christians will never do, man. Let me, let me get this in the book of Job, right? Okay, this is going to be the book of Job. <clears throat> so you got to go precept on precept to be able to come up with a conclusion, which these Christians, uh, they don't do. This is Job chapter 3, and I actually want to get 11. Okay, it says, And why died I not from the womb? Why did I not give up the ghost when I came out of the belly? So the book of Job, man, Job was pretty much complaining right here because he was catch, he was pretty much going through a lot of tribulation. All right, the Most High uh, was testing Job to see whether Job's faith was real. Okay, because Job had a lot of substance. Job had a lot of uh, wealth. He was a very rich man amongst all the people in his land. You know, he wanted to see if Job's faith was was real. You know, so pretty much Satan came in that day to try to tempt Job. So right, man, Job was going through. A lot of tribulation, you know. So he was complaining at this point. Alright, so he says, Why died I not why died I not from the womb? And why did I not give up the ghost when I came out of that belly? Right. He's just like, Why didn't I just die if I'm gonna be going through all of this hell, right? Why did the knees prevent me, or why did the breast that I should suck? For now I had been still uh laying still and been quiet. I should have been, I should have slept. Meaning that he would have, you know, been, um, he would have died, you know. 
that I had been at risk, right? So Joe was pretty much just saying like, look, this is what would happen to me if I were to die. You know, if I were to literally go to, if I were literally to go to sleep right now or get the spirit taken from me, he literally knows that he would be at rest, you see? Now we're gonna see who he would be at rest with, okay? Mm. He's gonna name all the types of people that would, he would be uh, sleeping with in the spiritual realm, with kings and counselors of the earth, which which built desolate places for themselves, or with princes that had gold, who filled their houses with silver, or as an untimely hidden birth, I had not that slot <clears throat> birth I had not been, as infants which never saw light. There the wicked cease from troubling, and there the weary be at rest. There the pr prisoner rest together. They hear not the voice of the oppressor. The small and great are there. The servant is free from his master. Now, what's that talking about? That's talking about the spiritual realm. Okay, and it went to name all different type of people, man. Princes, kings. You have babies who, who, uh, who, who died at birth. Okay, the wicked there. Prisoners, man. Oppressors, man. Small and great. Everyone is in this one particular area place when they die okay that's why we said man king solomon says one event come to all so you don't you can't come with this doctrine of you either go to heaven or hell no we're all going to go to the spiritual realm and according to the scriptures you're going to come back on the earth and be judged you see let me get that so so judgment is really taking place on this earth you see that's where we get judged at, all right? So you're up in the spiritual realm for like about three to four generations, but you're gonna come back down, okay? This is gonna be Ecclesiastes 3 and 16. It says, and moreover, I saw under the sun, the place of judgment, that wickedness was there, and the place of righteousness, that iniquity was there. So Solomon says that under the sun, he saw the place of judgment, right. which under the sun is talking about what? Earth, all right? Because you got the, obviously you got the sun up in the, um, you know, in the firmament, okay? And then you got this, this uh, physical earth right here, man. So King Solomon is saying that this is the place of judgment. And he says wickedness was there. Righteousness was there. All right, because the most high, hey, he, he, he pretty much is going to send you back on this earth, but in a, in a different body. All right? That's why we told you that your spirit is incorruptible. But your flesh dies off. And once you come back on the earth, you're gonna get a new flesh. You're gonna get new flesh. Alright? That's that's the point, man. So you come down here, and once you get that new flesh, you don't remember who you were or what you did, but you know, pretty much you're gonna live out what you did in your past life. So hey, that's why you got a lot of people um who come on this earth and you start you see how they got a lot of these different uh deformities, you know. A lot of people come on earth and, and they got uh, different type of problems. Like they might be blind, all right? Right. They, uh, the, the people might have no limbs. Certain people come out retarded. People got autis autism, all right? Or you might not have none of those things, but you might come out with, um, and you might just have a life that's just full of trials and tribulation, man. You got, you just bugged out. You got demons, you got certain habits you do. Okay, these are what you call um, judgments. You feel me? Yeah. So don't be looking at people and be like, ah, oh, you know, he's an innocent person. He didn't deserve that. It's unfair. No, he deserved that because what he did in his past life. You even have people who die at birth. Abortions. Everything, man, is 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 through Yahweh by Shem It's all judgment. Literally, everything is judgment. So you got to look at everything on a spiritual level, level. That's why when you look at people... You're like, damn, you know, like what happened to him? Yeah. But that's really a spiritual, that's really something spiritual that you said, although you might not acknowledge it. You're really saying like, damn, what did he do in his past life to end up like that? You know, that's really the type of uh, mindset that you got to have in this truth. All right. So uh, regeneration and hey, you coming back three to four generations is going to pay for what you, you did in your past life. You see, I got to preach it real quick. Here's Isaiah chapter 45 and 7. It says, I form the light and I create darkness. 
I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Mm -hmm. So when people come upon the earth, right, they're born with different infirmities. That's just because the Most High judged them and from their past life. Now, to substantiate that, let me go to John chapter 9 and 1. It says, And Yahweh shot passed by, he saw a man who was just blind from his birth. Mm -hmm. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? <clears throat> and that just goes to show you when his disciples asked him, Was this man uh, born blind because his parents or because himself? goes to show you that you can be judged because of your past life and what you did. Right. So the Most High, He judges people when they come upon the earth, right? Pretty much when they die uh, in that life, right? The life they're living and then come back on the earth in a new flesh. The Most High could just judge you right there. So that's where abortions come in, right? That's where people are losing the ability to walk in, do all these certain things. And also not only when you're born, but also when you're upon the earth, he can judge you right there and then you mm -hmm. get a car cr crash or do something, you know, okay. also I can just judge you. And you die in some type of uh, egregious way, it's like, wow, man. That was judgment, you know? The Lord, uh, this, is, this is the set stage, you know? The Lord has everything set right now. So everything is gonna take place on the earth, you see? So, hey, everyone's situation is, is just, you know? Everything is really just. Even what we went through as a people was judgment, you know? But the Lord, the point is we're going to deal with individuals. The Lord going to deal with some of us as individuals and we're going to come back on the earth and receive that recompense. Okay, again, that's why we right. got Sirach 41 and 8. Oh, woe be unto you ungodly men which have forsaken the law of the Most High. For if you increase, it shall be to your destruction. And if you be born, you shall be born to a curse. And if Damn. you die, a curse shall be your portion. So, right, if you are ungodly he says woe to you ungodly men okay because if you be born now how's that work how are you gonna be ungodly okay and then you pretty much you lived your life and it says if you be born when you already lived you know so that shows you that scripture literally right there shows you that an ungodly man he's gonna die but when he gets born again what happens if you be born you shall be born to a curse Right. And how can a baby who has never done nothing, if we're going by the logic of these people or these Christians who think you have one life, right? how are you going to be born to a curse if you didn't never, you didn't, you never did nothing in your past life? You never did nothing to prove whether you were good or whether you were bad, you know? That clearly shows you, man, that yes, regeneration is a thing. And this is what the most, this is the most size order of things. This is how he set things up, you see? A lot of people don't understand this. Uh, that's what these Christians don't do. They don't like to go precept upon precept. Because Isaiah says, who's he going to teach knowledge and understanding and doctrine? You got to go precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. You see? That's what we're doing, man. Yeah, I want to read this precept too real quick. This is Proverbs chapter 28 and 5. It says, evil men understand not judgment, but they that seek the Lord understand all things. Now, the reason why uh, evil men don't understand judgment because you see here in America... Especially in America, you have a lot of people who do evil things, but don't don't think about the recompense. They don't think about the consequences, you know, and that's what it means to not understand judgment of the Most High. Because people can do what they want here in America all day long and not be, you know, not go through any type of tribulation just yet. But at the end of the day, it's going to happen. All right. They're right. going to be judged with that final judgment, especially. Mm -hmm. We understand where we go. Everyone goes to the same place. So really, when you look on hell, the actual understanding upon hell, okay, I know you got a precept that you were gonna bring out upon the spiritual understanding upon oh, it. Yeah, uh, yeah. Way of hell to depart from beneath. Proverbs 15, 24. The way of life is above to the wise that he may depart from hell beneath. Right, and what Solomon is saying here is that in the spirit, right, it's a spiritual aspect of things. The way of life will be above to the to the wise, mm -hmm. right? That you can depart from hell beneath, right? And hell, as we know in the Hebrew, Mishehu, meaning the grave. So you would depart from hell beneath, not necessarily meaning you're going into a third dimension, right? And you burn forever. That's not what that means. Okay. And even in, even in the Christianity, according to hell, like you can't depart from hell. If you go to hell, that's where you at. So 
that's that's not what that really means. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the way of life is above to the wise. So, the way of the the way of the wise, slack. The way of life is the word the words of the Most High, Yahweh because these words will bring your soul to life. And let me also go to Isaiah 55. I got a precept after that. All right, verses uh nine. It says, "For as the heavens are higher than the earth." So are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. So that what the Most High is saying here is that the way of life is above. You see, his ways and his thoughts are above our ways and our thoughts. So ultimately, if you want to find it, you have to find it within the word of the Most High, which is wisdom. Uh, I'm going to get this. Proverbs 21 and 7, 16. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. So, you know, pretty much if you go... If you're not in the way of understanding, you see, which is these scriptures, which is the most highest ways, which is above, you're going to be in the congregation of the dead. So you're going to be like a dead, you're going to be in a dead estate, you know, right. you're going to be like in the grave, right? Not physically, but we're talking about on a mental and on a spiritual level, you're going to be like a, a, a dry bone, you know, right? Because it tells you in Ezekiel 37 that uh, Ezekiel had to go prophesy to the dry bones now. Were these literally dry bones? No. This is talking about the children of Israel because they lacked understanding. They were on a very low vibrational level as far as um like the truth, you see? So they were pretty much in a dry state, meaning that they um you know, let, let me get this right quick. Okay, um let me get this right quick. Hosea four and six it says My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge, because I'll reject the knowledge, I will also reject thee. That thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing that I have forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. So, yeah, pretty much right here, we are destroyed, man. We're on a low level. Okay, we're literally in hell on a spiritual aspect because we have no knowledge. Okay? We don't have this truth. We don't have the breath of life within us. Alright? You got to get that breath of life breathed into you to come out of that dead estate. Okay? Because a lot of people here are walking... Are like dead men walking, you know. They got that like the Walking Dead. These people out here, um, who are who are still committing adultery. I right? who people out here who still calling themselves black, still eating pork, shrimp, crab, lobster. People who, uh, who identify pretty much with being an American, and you want to live here in America, but you an Israelite, you're literally dead. You know, you don't have the knowledge it takes to get you, um, salvation. You know, pretty much so, hey, our people, man, they're in this low level because they lack knowledge. Okay, that's uh, that's, a, under, that's a pretty much the spiritual understanding of Pond Hill. It literally starts off with you and the mind, you know. Right. It starts off with how you, you think, okay. Because you can be a dead man walking just because you don't have this truth. You know, if you have this truth, hey, you pretty much, um, you pretty much have been breathed into you the breath of life. Yeah. So you gotta you gotta spiritually waken up first and spiritually come out of hell. All right. Or you one scripture for that. Okay, John chapter six and sixty three. All right. It says, uh, "If this it is the spirit that quickeneth, and quickeneth means to make alive." So it says, "It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit." And they are life. So simply to put it, the words of the Most High, which are you know the words of the Bible. If you 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 read these words and you apply it to your life as an Israelite, right? That's what's going to quicken your spirit or your mm -hmm. soul, right? Mm -hmm. So you're no longer going to be that dry bone, or dry or or stone uh, the heart of stone, right? But you're going to become flesh, uh, grow sinews and muscles and things of that sort, and become alive, right? But it says. The flesh profited nothing. <clears throat> Excuse me. It says the pr flesh profited nothing, and that's exactly why the flesh, right, is is is, is clay, and it'll go right back to the clay. It'll go right back to the dirt, to the earth, and your spirit will go to the heavenly Father, because that's really what matters. God. Your spirit before you are the flesh. Yep. That's why we're in this um. Really going back to it, man. We're in this low level of uh, being a people, one of the lowest bottom parts of society. It's really because we we don't have the knowledge, man. Because we don't understand who we are. We're not coming back to the covenant that we made with God, okay? 
Because we we literally lack knowledge. You got you got look you got to think about that, man. Why would you go and serve an idol? You know what I'm saying? Go and serve these other guys when you have the God who made everything. You see, the Most High is on our side, man. He's not anybody else's God, but you want to go and serve other gods? Do with these other philosophies? Well, that just shows you how low of a level you are on, you know? Right. And that's why you got a lot of our people now. Um, we get we pretty much get oppressed, all right? We're pretty much in this low condition. We got all these different bywords that we have to call ourselves. Okay, we're in another people's land. It's because we, we lack the knowledge that we're getting punished. We lack the knowledge of the covenant that we are in. You see, that's why you get um, Isaiah 5 and 13. Therefore, my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. Their honorable men are famished and their multitude dried up with thirst. Therefore, hell, now there goes hell, you know. Now, this hell right here is, is talking about captivity. Okay, therefore, hell has enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure. In their glory, their multitude, their pomp, and he that rejoiceth shall descend into it okay so pretty much because we lack knowledge because we went after all these different idols and we broke the commandments the most high sent us into captivity because we've suffered the curses you see so hey that's that's what happened man we we pretty much went off and we went to hell all right hell is not talking about a place where you burn okay this really is talking about captivity being in a low estate okay being ruled over by your enemies. That's why they call this like, um, like they say, a, a white man's heaven is a black man's hell, right? Uh, it's like we're living in hellish conditions, all right? In in the slums, in the ghettos, you know? In the, uh, what do they call it? The, the varios, you know? The varos, the varios, I think it's called, you know? And pretty much uh, the projects. See, all of these places that our people are within, man, it's like in a hellish condition. Okay, all, all, everything that you we keep going through these examples, man, everything's out of order. Okay? Everything's out of order, man. Drugs, guns, violence, women women is all masculine. Everything, man. Okay, men are feminine. So we are in this hell hole of a place because we are pretty much lacking that knowledge, man. So we we just gave you, you know, the spiritual aspect of it, man. You know? The spiritual aspect of hell literally means that you don't have knowledge you're on a low level of understanding right. right okay and also it means captivity okay it means to be in slavery if you look into the actual definitions Sheol literally means what the grave hades means the grave okay gehenna that means um that literally like we said it goes back to the valley of Hinnom, where kings of judah wicked kings of judah wicked kings of judah Will sacrifice their kids, their their uh, their offspring to Molech. You see, so look, none of these definitions and nothing that we read in here goes down, goes back to this Greek mythology type of understanding. Because the way they these these the way these Christians get that understanding is because they go to, I believe, Second Peter. Okay, they go to Second Peter chapter two and four, and they read. Okay, let me just read it right. Let me let me read it right quick. Second Peter chapter two and four, all right? Okay, one time out of the whole Bible, you have one different, you have one other definition, right? It says, for God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness and reserved them unto judgment. Now you got people read that and take it literally, you see? And I'm not gonna go too deep with this, okay? But that hell that you read here in this context it's talking about Tartarus, you see? If you look into that word Tartarus, all right, we can even just look it up. Can I get a, yeah. let me look up Tartarus. Oh, it changed it. Okay, so it says, so you got, um, Tartarus, right? Strong's Greek 520 to thrust down to Tartarus, okay? Get or Gehenna to incarcerate in eternal torment. So, okay, that's the one that's the one scripture throughout the whole entire Bible that might support a place where you actually go down and burn 
forever and ever. Not even understanding that sometimes these these are talking about parables. But even when you read about these um these these people who who claim to have studied it and gave those definitions, that's going that's really not uh, biblical because Tartarus is a Greek mythology. If you literally look up Tartarus, man, okay, on Google in Google, okay, you can look it up, right? So these scholars who put that together, they didn't they didn't even understand what that meant, right? Because it was a parable. Yeah. And it's like a spiritual man, a uh, uh, natural man cannot receive the things that are the spirit. So uh, you got Tar, Tartarus. Okay, Lily says Tartarus, the infernal regions of ancient Greek mythology. The name was originally used for the deepest region of the world. The lower of the two parts of the underworld where the gods locked up their enemies it gradually came to mean the underworld, right? Hmm. And you keep going, okay. Um, as it was a, it's a lot, con. Let me see right quick. But if you if you read some other articles, pretty much that just shows you that it's supposed to be some underground chamber where uh, they would torture titans. You know, they would torture titans, and you'll be banned, banished down to this realm where you're burned forever. But that's all uh, Greek mythology, you see. So what these uh, Christians do is they take that Greek mythology and they try to, you know, incorporate it into these scriptures. When that's not what you need to be doing. That's not what you should have been doing, man. All right. That's why everything's all twisted nowadays. So whenever you read about a parable about hell and you going down to burn, you know what I'm saying? Then you taking that literal. You can't take that literal, you know. That would just be thinking upon Greek mythology when we already showed you precept upon precept where you go when you die. One place. All hap one event happened to all men, you see? Alright. So uh yeah, with that man. Lord willing, okay, we gave a better understanding if you didn't know already. Alright, Lord willing this video, uh it was edifying. But till next time we say uh shalom.